Hello urologists, nephrologists. Today we're going to be talking about the kidney in preparation to dissect. So I'm going to be helping you guys make a color-coded diagram of the kidney and understand the parts so when you dissect you can locate everything. We're going to start with the outside of the kidney and I'm going to start with the renal capsule. I'm using origami organelles kidney and I'll start with the renal capsule on theirs. It's the outermost layer, so a capsule is like a coating. Then let's look at what it looks like in a real kidney. Finally, let's draw it on our diagram. The next part of the kidney that we're going to look at is the cortex. If you think about when we learned about the brain, the cortex is the outside. It literally comes from the word bark, so the bark of a tree. Cortex is always going to be the outside of something. So this reddish layer here, right inside the capsule, is the cortex. Let's see what it looks like on a real specimen. Now you'll add the cortex to your kidney. So we have the capsule, which is the black, and then we have a layer right inside the capsule. So now my kidney looks like a C. I did the cortex in red. I added a border of where the cortex ends in red marker and then shaded in the cortex in red colored pencil. The capsule's job is to support and protect the kidney, so it's the outermost layer. The cortex's job is to filter. So the kidney really does three things. It filters things out of the blood, it reabsorbs a lot of what was filtered out, and then it secretes the stuff we don't need. Well, the cortex is where the filtering happens. Another thing that the cortex does is it makes a hormone that helps us make red blood cells. So your kidney is actually an endocrine organ as well as being part of the urinary system. It makes something called erythropoietin to produce new red blood cells. So the kidneys are constantly tasting our blood, seeing how many red blood cells we have, and then triggering our bones to make more red blood cells. Next we'll look at the medullary pyramids and the medulla. So medulla, we also have a medulla oblongata in our brain. Medulla means middle, and it almost sounds like middle. And so we have the cortex here, and then this central area called the medullary pyramids. And what happens here in the medulla and the pyramids is that it reabsorbs. So remember I said it filters out here, and then once it gets to the middle, it's reabsorbing the things that we need, like some of the water, all of the sugar, um, some of the salts are getting reabsorbed back into our blood. I've now added my medulla and my medullary pyramids to my diagram of the kidney. So I used purple, and the entire, this entire layer in the middle is called the medulla. It includes the medullary pyramids, but some of it is not medullary pyramids. So we can kind of see the pyramids in there and they tend to be a slightly different shade than the spaces in between them, which aren't, the spaces in between aren't quite as big as what I've shown. Let's look at what they actually look like. The medullary pyramids and the medulla reabsorbs what we need, and then that means that the urine is becoming more and more concentrated when it's in the medulla because more of the materials are leaving it. So here it's going to be a really pale color, and then it's going to get darker here the farther it goes in. The kidney works from the outside in with urine becoming more concentrated, and by the time it gets to the tip of each pyramid, it's very concentrated and it's ready to pass to the next section. The next structures are called calyxes or calyces. Um, each one is a calyx, and that comes from a word meaning cup. So these are like little cups that the, that the pee drips through. It's a passageway from the medulla into the next section of the kidney. The part that I just shaded in orange is known as the renal pelvis. Renal just means kidney. Um, and so just like we have a pelvis in which our abdominal organs sit, this is the pelvis in which the pee sits, basically. As it passes from the pyramids through each calyx, it goes into the pelvis and it's the collecting area for that pee. With the next structure, we're actually leaving the kidney. So 
the kidney connects to another organ called the ureter. And you have a ureter on each side, just like you have a kidney on each side. The function of the ureter is basically it's a pee tube that carries the dripping pee down into your bladder where it can be stored until it's ready to leave through the urethra. Here's how I represented the ureter in my diagram. I wanted it to be yellow since it contains the urine. So the renal pelvis exits through the ureter. The final two structures are the blood vessels that lead to and from the kidneys. Let's start with the renal artery. Again, renal means kidney. Artery means it's running away from the heart. So the renal artery is really coming from your, directly from your heart. It is chock full of oxygen that your kidney needs in order to function, but it's also full of waste, cellular waste, that the kidney needs to clean out. So the blood coming into the kidney is both dirty and full of oxygen. It, as it comes in through the renal artery, all of that arterial blood flows around the cortex and then finds its way in through the medulla. Remember out here, it's getting cleaned. Things are being filtered out of it. Here, some things are being reabsorbed back into the blood. And then the stuff that was filtered out goes into the renal pelvis. Well, once all this happens, all of the reabsorbed materials and the blood from the medulla need to make their way back to the heart. So those things leave through the renal vein. Now, the blood is lacking oxygen because the oxygen's been dropped off to nourish the kidney, uh, to give the kidney oxygenation, but it is clean. So the blood leaving in the renal vein is clean, but deoxygenated. And now it's going to go back to the heart, get pumped to the lungs so it can get oxygen. In the next video, I'll be telling you all about the nephrons, which are in here and do all the magical things that the kidney can do. The parts of the nephron, called the glomerulus and Bowman's capsules, are all in the cortex. The glomerulus and Bowman's capsule is where the filtration happens. And then the parts called the loops of Henle and the collecting ducts and the convoluted tubes, all of those involve reabsorption of materials and then ultimately secretion into the renal pelvis. So those are in the medulla. That means that the formation of urine happens in the cortex and the medulla, passing into the pelvis. The pelvis is where the urine is collected and then the ureter takes it to the bladder. Once it passes through the ureter, it goes to the bladder and when we are ready, it comes out through the urethra. Hopefully that helps give you a better understanding of the kidney and its role in the urinary system and gets you ready to dissect an actual kidney if you have that opportunity. If you have any questions at all, drop them in the comments and thanks for watching.